Meantime, just two decades ago, there were only four MPs from black and minority ethnic backgrounds. Today, there are more than 50 of them, and one man has played a pivotal role in boosting black representation in politics. He is Simon Woolley. He's led the campaign organisation Operation Black Vote for 23 years. He's now Sir Simon, after being recognised in the Queen's Birthday Honours for the work he's done as a race and equalities activist. But the knighthood came as a bit of a surprise, given the sometimes controversial work he's done in highlighting race discrimination. As you can see, Sir Simon joins Hi. us now. Hello to you. It's nice to see Thank you. you. Thanks too. for coming in. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. How it's surprised were you? Very surprised. I mean, this is not supposed to happen to, to kids that are brought up on a council estate to be knighted, to, be, uh, to have that title in front of their name years later. But here it is. It's, it's a bit overwhelming. Tell us what happened. And you very got the humbling. letter. Got the letter, and I showed my son. His jaw dropped, as did mine. And he said to me, you're with the big boys, Dad. Ah. And I said, oh, we are, son, we are too. And uh, I said, we'll go to the palace and get a suit and uh, go on one knee and be knighted by, by the Queen. And is it the Queen that uh, knighted you? I, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll, I'll know in a few weeks' time. OK. Um, you must have been surprised, though, given that you have... Uh, taken on the establishment on more than one occasion. That's right. I mean, that's been our role. I mean, our role is to challenge the establishment mm -hmm. to make sure it's more inclusive, more representative. And that means often crossing swords, campaigning, protesting, pointing the finger. And so being an outsider, you never expect to be recognised by the very institutions that, that you've challenged over two decades. But I guess it's a recognition in the way things are changing, that, that they're now looking at people who have sought to transform our society, our institutions, to bring communities in who, who didn't have a voice and to make our society much better. Tell us about your work. Well, it's been for over two decades and giving people a voice, challenging persistent inequality in jobs, in education, in Parliament, you know, taking it from four MEPs to over, for over 50. And I think that the Parliament is better off for it. Like, there's, you know, when there's more women, when there's more minority voices, the debate the debate is better. But it's not just about Parliament, you know, it's about all facets of our society. Business, for example, you know, we often argue that diversity works. Mm -hmm. When you have more diversity around the board table, looking at our diverse society, global economy, it's much better when people feel included. Do you feel that it has become easier to achieve that over time? I think so. I mean, you know, we'd like to see ourselves as really disciples of Dr Martin Luther King. You know, he had a dream, but he had more than a dream, he had a plan. And his plan was to, to empower African-Americans to advance progress. And we think we're on that trajectory. It's gotten easier, but sometimes you can go forward and a little bit backwards. I think austerity over the last 10 years and Brexit, there's been a strain, a xenophobic strain that has been unleashed, uh, which needs to be challenged. And so you have to be vigilant. You have to keep your foot on the pedal. Take people with you. Mm. That was going to be my question. I mean, given the way that politics is at the moment, are you finding that more challenging? Sometimes. I mean, the, the, the climate, the climate has, has been a bit, a bit rotten in some places, you know, that, um, that I was brought up in an era when they would say, send the wogs to Vietnam. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, and that was pretty brutal. And yet, fast forward 40, 50 years, and my son is being called the N-word, you know, when he plays Fortnite online. I mean, it's become... Sadly, Kate, it's become more legitimized, uh, the, the level of racism, I think, due to a certain strain in Brexit. I'm not blaming Brexit in total, but there's a strain. So you have to be vigilant. But, you know, when we look at our businesses, when we look at Parliament, when we look at local authorities, London, Bristol, Harringay, you see black leaders, male and female, mm. the, the change is there to be seen. But I'm impatient. I think there's a deluge of talent that's just waiting to fulfil its potential. And so I want leaders, I want leaders in the media, leaders in other business community, in politics, in medicine, to recognise the, the deluge of talent that just needs a pathway and everybody benefits. So what form of uh, is your vigilance taking and what can others do to try to help? Yeah, well, I've been lucky uh, working with the Prime Minister the last 18 months. Uh, we convinced her to undertake a race disparity uh, unit audit to look at how Whitehall and its policies are reflecting minority communities. Does it work? What's not working? And her mantra was explain the inequalities or change. 
And that's been a fantastic framework for which to hold ministers to account. I hope it carries on. I mean, you know, she's not there much longer. But the framework is, I want all parties to say this works for race, works for gender, it can work for people with disability, but it needs leadership. Mm. It needs people to say, we acknowledge the challenge and we need drivers, uh, both from the very top, in the middle and below too. Do you have a thought on which Prime Minister you think you would be able to work with the best? No, no, I don't. I, I want them to... I want them to... You see, certain things, I think, like gender, like, like race, like poverty, are above party politics. Mm. And anybody going to that famous door ought to recognise that, yes, certain politics is tribal and, and bloody, brutal, but there's certain issues are beyond it. And if you can get leaders to kind of say, this is, this is beyond this, all leaders need to work together, then we can get to a better place sooner rather than later. Although some of our politicians, um, some of the comments that they've made, yeah. you wouldn't be comfortable with. Not at all. And look, it's my job uh, not to tiptoe around. Uh, when someone's wrong, I'll point the finger, I'll hold them to account, uh, whether they like it or not. I mean, they can say, we're not talking to you, or this, that and the other. But, but I won't shy away. I'm going on a march in, in a couple of weeks' time against Windrush. I think the Windrush scandal has been appalling, frankly. My mother's, my mother's generation, she came here as a young woman, worked in the hospitals all her adult life. And to have her generation to be, to be challenged the way they are, whether they are citizens or not, is frankly appalling. So whatever needs to be said, I won't be afraid to say it. Mm. But you would align yourself with somebody like Sajid Javid more than potentially Boris Johnson? I, I'm not getting into uh, names. I'm getting, uh, what I want is, we have an agenda, we have a manifesto. I want all the leaders to look at it and sign up to it, and then we'll see how they behave, whether or not, and how we hold them to account. Mm. Have you ever met Nigel Farage? No, I haven't. He did write to us in the early days. Uh, I think he tried to, you know, court us in some ways. But uh, some of the things he said and some of the, some of the kind of the dog whistling stuff, uh, I've not been happy with. And, uh, you know, I, so I've steered away. Have you told him? Oh, yes, he knows. He knows exactly how I feel. Uh, you've written to him or...? Yeah, I mean, he's, I've written about him. I've, I've spoken to his allies. So, you know, he knows that the dog whistling stuff, that this xenophobic genie, this anti-immigrant, when my mother's generation and the, the, the generations, the Asian uh, generations and others that okay, have made this country dynamic, both home and abroad. And, and I rail against those that, that um, point the finger at immigrants in such a negative way when I think we've made a great contribution and we can make an even more greater contribution if those pathways to equality are, are laid, are laid there. Tell us about your background. You say mum was um, the Windrush generation. She mm. was a nurse? She was a nurse, yes. I was lucky, Kay. I had two mothers. So I, I had a Barbadian mother, but I was also fostered and adopted by a Welsh mother, an Irish father, who in many ways have made me what I am today. You know, they filled me with love and affection and the belief that I could do anything. Um, I've reconnected with my birth mother now, and that's rather special. How was that? Special. I mean, you know, there's, there's pain, there's tears, um, but there, there's a connection. She's my, what she's, happened? She's, she's my mother. Mm. She had to make difficult decisions. But I was lucky. I mean, you know, this is a, a longer debate, really, but I was lucky because, because I was in a home full of love. And so we used to go to Wales in the, the Rhonda Valley. Me and, me and my half-brother, two black kids in, in the, the, the White Valleys of Wales... <laughs> So we were a bit of an oddity, but, you know, it's who I am today. Mm. Um, what advice would you give to others who are, you know... Um, Working class. I was going to say struggling, but I don't mean struggling. Oh. I mean um, making, looking to make their mark. Right. To believe, to, you know, it's not where you start from, it's where you go. Mm. And it's how you believe in yourself. And I think that, that anyone thinks this is a walk in the park, it isn't. But if you can find some inner strength, and belief, and are supported, whether it's by friends or, or family. There should be no limits. You know, that here I'm speaking to you today, Sir Simon Woolley, and it's a bit, it's a bit mind boggling, but it's true. Uh, and I want other, particularly working class kids, black and white, to, to have that vision and belief with hard work and endeavor that there's no limits. Are you gonna use your prefix? 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, because it's a, it's a bit daunting. Um, I think when I want doors to open to change our world, sure. then I will. But I, I won't use it for, to get a better table at a restaurant. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Or get a cab. <laughs> or get a cab. <laughs> or get a cab. Maybe, maybe that if I'm flying a long distance and I want to try... Exactly. You know, guilty, <laughs> exactly. You got Looking me. for that upgrade. You got maybe me. Wear the, maybe, maybe wear, wear the, the badge. Wear the badge. As well. Wear the badge. But, you know, look, I think... In all but, seriousness. But, but with coming from working class and having yeah. good friends, they'll keep me grounded. Yeah. So if I start getting puffed up, uh, they'll say, Wally, behave yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and what the first thing you're going to do once you've got your medal, what are you going to do? Um, uh, I, I guess I want my family, friends and family, to, to enjoy it. And actually, I've been overwhelmed by the community response. I mean, the, the deluge of, of um, love and warmth often only comes to people when they die. And so it's nice to get it right now. Yeah. And, but it, I think in many ways, Kay, that they've, they're sharing in this because it's about struggle, because it's about breaking down barriers, and many people have been with me on this journey. They feel it's their success too. That's, that's pretty special.